guys, welcome to another Dynamics Physics in the Flesh problem. Frictional support for mountain climber. The 73 kilogram climber in the image below is supported in the chimney by the friction forces exerted by his shoes and back. The static coefficients of friction between his shoes and the wall and between his back and the wall are 0.81 and 0.61 respectively. What is the minimum normal force he must exert? Assume the walls are vertical and that friction forces are both at a maximum. Ignore his grip on the rope. Okay, so first thing I recognize when I hear that friction forces are at a maximum, I think static friction, right? Because if you ever looked at a graph of friction, how much friction uh, an object will exert, well, how much it undergoes, it's always a maximum when you have static. Static is like Newton's third law. You apply a little force, static friction pushes back, and it keeps doing that till you reach the maximum static friction. And once you break that maximum static friction, the frictional force drops and it becomes kinetic and it's a constant value. So here we go. Now, at first glance, yes, this does seem like a complex problem, but this is actually really simple. There's, uh, there's just a few more forces going on here, but the math actually takes a bit less to solve. So we're gonna solve this like any other problem. First thing we're gonna do is draw our free body diagram, okay? And I'm gonna keep it super simple. I'm gonna draw the mountain climber as a box, of course, because that's the easiest way to do it. And simplest force, first force I'm gonna draw, he's got mass, of course, therefore, there's a force from gravity going straight down. Okay, so we've got FG. Next thing I think of, okay, so it says there's frictional forces uh, between his shoes in the wall and his back in the wall. Okay, now, there's frictional forces, yeah, but he's supporting himself and he's pushing. His feet are pushing on this wall. His back's pushing on that wall. And so there's going to be normal forces, right? So there's going to be the normal force from the right wall and that normal force is going to go towards the left, right? And the normal force of him pushing on his feet on this wall, those normal forces are going to go toward the right. Okay, so we've got a normal force from the left and a normal force from the right. And that's how we're going to draw it. Okay, so going towards the left is the normal force from the right okay so because from this wall the force is going to push this way and from this wall the force is going to push that way so going right we've got f n l normal force from the left okay we're almost done here now we just have to deal with our frictional forces okay obviously there's two here we've got friction with his feet and we've got friction with his back okay so i'm going to say frictional force from his feet that's going up, so that's going to be called FF, subscript F again, for frictional force on his feet. And frictional force on his back is going to be this, FFB. Okay, and we have to work with these forces here. Okay, now I'm using a lot of subscripts here. I mean, G, you already know, that's gravity. Let me just make a little legend here. Okay, F is feet, B is back, L is left, R is right. Okay, so there we go. Now, because we're dealing with frictional forces at a maximum, okay, we're dealing with static friction. And static friction means you're not moving, you're stationary. Okay, when you're moving, that's now kinetic friction. Okay, so this means you are stationary, you're not moving, and being stationary means the net forces in both directions equals zero and that's very important and that's what actually simplifies this problem a great deal okay so here we go I'm gonna start off with the X direction because I've got the least amount of forces I'm gonna simplify this problem a great deal okay so um, okay let's do this here X direction in the X direction so I've got my FNL FNR now, in order to uh, assign positive and negative values, I need to assign uh, positive and negative directions. So I'm gonna let up be positive y, I'm gonna let right be positive x. So here we go. We're gonna do f net x equals zero. That's the best, okay? So on the right, fnl minus the left, fnr. fnl minus fnr equals zero, okay? So you come up with that simple expression, therefore, FNL equals FNR. This is going to come in handy later on. Okay, so that's X direction. 
Now let's work in the y direction. In the y direction, we've got a few more forces, well, one more, um, but it's really not that complicated. We're going to do the same thing. F net y equals zero. Okay, in our positive y direction, we've got force of friction on the feet, force of friction on the back. In the negative y direction, force of gravity. So we're just going to plug those in. Okay, so FFF plus FFB minus FG equals zero. Done. Okay, now start simplifying these expressions as you know them. Okay, we know the force of friction is the product between the coefficient of friction and the normal force. Now, the only complex thing is not mixing up which normal force you're using here. Okay, so the force of friction on the feet, okay, that's on the feet, right, going upwards because the climber, gravity is trying to make it go down. So the force of friction on the feet, it's going up, right? But the feet are pushing down on this rock towards the left. And so the normal force exerted back on the feet is the normal force going in the other direction, right? Okay, but we've got the normal force going left, right? That's FNL. That's the normal force acting on the feet. So we've got mu s on the feet, force normal left, right? That's this force. The normal force is going like that for the feet, plus force of friction on the back. So we're going to use mu s, coefficient of static friction for the back, right? Because they're different, times FFB, force of friction on the back. <clears throat> force of friction on the back is going up. The normal force is coming out in this direction, so the only normal force going in this direction is F and R. So we get F and R, okay? Um, FG is FG, okay, we know what that is. I'm gonna just take it and bring it to the right side. Okay, so I'm gonna call that MG. Now, here's where things get a little simplified, right? Because we just determined that F and R, F and L equals F and R. So I'm gonna do a little substitution here. So I'm gonna take F and R and replace it with F and L, okay? So let's keep going. I'm gonna plug in my numbers too. Uh, the coefficient of static friction on the feet, they told us that to be 0 0.81 F and L plus coefficient of static friction on the back, 0 0.61. FNL equals mg, mass is 73 kilograms, g is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Remember, you've got the two units there, newtons per kilogram or meters per second squared. Okay, now if you had 0.81x plus 0.61x, you would just get whatever they are added together, right? You would get 1.42x, but instead of x, we just have FNL. So when you take 0.81 of an FNL and add 0.61 FNL, you get 1.42 FNL. It's just like apples. One apple plus three apples is four apples. And 73 times 9.8, you get 715.4. So divide both sides by 1.42 and you get FNL equals 503.8 Newtons. Okay, so this is the force that the wall pushes on the climber with, okay? So now according to Newton's third law, the climber therefore must be pushing on the wall with the same force. And that's the same for the, the back and the feet, right? Because we, we established that they have to be the same in order for the net force and the X to be zero. Okay, so that's the idea. Okay, so due to Newton's third law, the force of the climber on the wall therefore must also equal to 503.8 newtons but of course uh, we have to express this in the proper number of sig figs which requires two so we're going to express that as 5.0 times 10 to the two newtons and that is the force okay that the climber must exert on the wall in order to remain stationary okay this much force against the wall from the back, that much force with the feet against the wall as well. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to click that like button and subscribe to my channel so you never miss a video from me, which by the way, I post every weekday at 12 noon. So be sure to be on my channel at that time. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your day and I will catch you in the next video.